Uh, Board of Health, June 25th, 2024, it is six o'clock. Um, in attendance, Steve Sebeska, Jim Philbrook, and on the phone, Matt Gagna. Um, first order of business is the acceptance of the prior meeting minutes for our last meeting, which was May 28th. Is there a motion to accept those? I read them and I signed them already. Through the chair, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes. Very good. Do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, we have Jamie Rice in the audience today. Jamie, you want to come on up and um, we'll discuss you as our uh, part-time regional inspector. And Jim, you're going to be uh, better right. at explaining how all this works better than I am. So take it Through you to the board. Um, this is Jamie Rice. Um, as you know, we have the Trump Coalition for Public Health, and we lost our last in inspector. Um, and uh, we went through the process, and Jamie uh, was, through Human Resources, we had the other um, four uh, municipalities involved. Of course, the board is the appointing authority for each town, as we did before. And Jamie was chosen. She has the highest qualifications and has worked uh, in this area before and is a child resident and uh, is going to come on um, part-time for the part-time position and uh, hopefully later she's going to take the full-time position that's available. Um, there's no training involved because she's already achieved. There's still training but not like starting from square one. It would take about a year and a half to two years to get someone trained properly to what she has already so um, we voted unanimously to recommend to this board that we appoint Jamie Rice to uh, be the coalition inspector for the Charlton Coalition for Public Health, which includes Wales, Sturbridge, Spencer, Sutton, and of course Charlton is the lead. So we have Jamie here for any questions the board may have. I don't. You come highly recommended, so that's that's a good thing. I know Jim was very um, glad to uh, see that you were available and, and uh, willing to come on and, and help out the five towns with the work, so that's great. And the coalition itself, it's up to each municipality what, how much Jamie would do and what, like, Sturbridge would use it for right now for hotels and beach sampling and housing inspections, but she has to go before the board. Um, but she will be hired if this board chooses to appoint her for July 1st. She'll start and we'll start getting her up to speed on getting her signed in with a computer and equipment that she would need and um, then she'd go to the other um, four towns to get appointed and um, Sturbridge is ready for her but, um, to do some stuff. She has worked for the town of Sturbridge before and the town of Dudley, I believe, mm -hmm. um, in the health department. So Good. she has experience. Great. Excellent. So I would strongly recommend that the board would um, vote her in as the regional inspector for the Trump Coalition for Public Health. Perfect. Matt, any questions? Uh, I do not have any questions. All right, Steve? No questions. No questions, so I, I guess we'll uh, entertain a, a motion to uh, accept Jamie Rice as part-time regional inspector. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. aye. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll second it. <laughs> All in favor, aye. Just aye. to make sure it's right. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want anything on a technicality. Perfect. Well, well, great. Welcome. Okay. Well, thank you. So you still have to go through the same process with the other towns, or is this? She has to go through because every single town because although she's been um, gone through the interview process and been vetted, she had a Corey Story check, uh, she had a background check, all her references, each board has the right. You can't do inspections in a municipality unless the board approves because okay. you're the approval authority right. for anyone who does inspections that says Charlton or Child Coalition for Public Health. So okay. what happens if one of the other towns has a doesn't approve her? What happens then? We kick them out of the coalition. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I don't think she'll have any issues. I think they're, yeah. they're waiting. Which way's the wind blowing? There's been a there's been a lapse in inspections on some of the towns. Wales doesn't have an inspector right now, so they'd be. So have to catch up. The question is, you said uh, July 1st for a higher date. Are, are, have you gone before any of the other boards? No, no she'll no. come here. First one. Okay. We have a lot of other work for her to get caught up okay. with and getting ID. She has to get um, um, 
computer sign in yeah. just to register for a bunch of stuff we have a bunch of classes that are mandatory there there's um, a bunch of training classes that she has to attend uh, to get caught up a big part of it so um, you know racial equity is part of that that training that class has to be done um, we use computers for our inspections she'll have to get trained in that also mm -hmm. so that'll take and we're going paperless in here so everything's going to be on our computer and even the inspections we do are on a computer now so housing and, and food and uh, and uh, not camp inspections yet they're not on there it's too uh, detailed but um, she'll have to get caught up on that too so okay. we'll have the trainer great so. you're welcome well thank you I appreciate I'm it glad to have you oh. and Matt's on the phone so. thank you Matt <laughs> <laughs> You're all set. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Thank you're all you. set. I you can, you can head on home if you wish. Okay. You're welcome to stay, but we need to. If I yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. So I would expect, what day would you, what day are you coming in next, uh, after next week? Tuesday or Wednesday? Either one, and I'll say two consecutive days. Yeah, just call me. Give me a call tomorrow. Okay. 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 All right. And have a safe ride home. Okay. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Um, for new business, we do have um, something called paint stewardship legislation. This was brought up uh, at a previous meeting, and we decided to table it. Uh, there has been some uh, attachments sent out in an email. Matt, I know you're on vacation, so you may not have had a chance to look at it. Steve, I'm, I'm assuming you were able to spend I, a little time. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did see the. Uh, the original attachment or uh, one of the original um, documents on it. Okay. So something else came out. Was that today? I believe it was with the four attachments. Yep. I think Andrea today. sent it out. So I was able to read that and then I reviewed it again um, here. Um, I've been informed also by Jim that the uh, deadline for uh, a yay or nay on, on us moving forward with uh, with our thoughts on this was has passed. It's actually uh, mm -hmm. it been yesterday. That they needed to hear, and I don't know if that's a hard and fast rule or not. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, uh, as long as you're on the phone, Matt, we can make this as, as brief as, as you want, or we can get into specifics. Uh, what, I don't I don't know where you want to go with this, but um, it seemed pretty self-explanatory with what I saw on the attachments and what's before us mm -hmm. here. With, uh, with with uh, supporting a law that would uh, take care of uh, proper disposal of some of the paints that, that, that are sold here in the state. I don't know what else to say. Um, Matt, do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, not really. <laughs> I don't have any thoughts. Okay. Do you feel, if, if we were to uh, try to, to uh, do a vote on this um, on a, to approve or to pass on it. Uh, do you feel uh, that you've got enough information to do that tonight? Honestly, probably not, because I didn't see the documents that came out today. Okay, well, that's fine. We can we can table it, and I don't want to put you under any pressure either, uh, especially while you're not in town. So that's fine. We can we can table this until the next meeting. Uh, yeah, because if we already missed the deadline, um, yeah, it's almost a moot point, but right, yeah, okay. See, so are you okay with that? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, Jim. What I didn't like is them setting a deadline and tell us if, if they really want people to get into this, what are you setting a deadline for? You know, if the board doesn't meet, I mean, it seems like they're telling us so. I'd like to look into this a little more and, and, and give more information to the board. And call some of the other towns, um, like Matt said, get more information and allow the board to have an informed decision rather than just the yay or nay for, uh, yeah. okay. I just, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't had time to even look into this. And I look at all the other towns that are in there and I just know the selectmen uh, shot it back to the board and I think the board should wait and do an informed decision. I agree. All right, so why don't we uh, go ahead and we'll, we'll uh, keep this on the agenda for the next meeting and uh, Matt, hopefully you're in and, and we can have some more time for a discussion at that point. All right, so I'll make a motion to table that discussion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good, thank you. Uh, moving on, I don't think there's any other new business, Jim. We did, 
we, we had uh, a person who thought that he would come in and, and that was decided that he did not have to come in so there's no other new business that I'm aware of. Under old business we have uh, Flint Road Landfill and also related um, PFAS. Um, Jim, I, I did talk with you today about some additional PFAS contaminations at some residences in the area. And, um, I won't. Go ahead. If I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, I did um, speak with you and I think I spoke to Matt briefly about it on a separate phone call. I, I don't want to bring up any addresses specifically, but there is another um, home that was met that was over the threshold of 20. PFAS and therefore mandated our immediate notification to the EP. Gary called, uh, we did provide them with bottled water as well as one other home that was um, at a lower level of 7.6, I believe, I don't have it in front of me. But this home uh, is mandated a, a filtration system, so we have to move forward on the filtration system. Filtration system has been ordered and Gary will be putting it in as soon as, um, but he did notify DEP who have mandated that um, because of our landfill issue that we install a filtration system. He did let um, the town administrator know about it, Andrew Bolas, and he's aware of the situation. There's really not much we can do about it other than comply with DEP and as directed and install that filtration system. I just didn't want to bring up an address and uh, put yeah, anyone under, right. under uh, any kind of duress that um, people may be worried or whatever. Right. Charlton is taking uh, you know, extra precaution and making sure that bottled water is provided, even though it's under the drinking water standards because we're mandated by DEP, but this one address is over, um, so therefore it has to have a filtration system. Good. No. Directed, so. it, it's, <laughs> it's unfortunate the town will be incurring additional expense, but um, good that at least the, uh, the uh, residents uh, at that house are, um, are going to be provided with some some good drinking water. So yes, and that was that was done. Uh, uh, it was done right away. As soon as we get the results back, we're do we have another set of um, of PFAS testing test results coming anytime in the near future that you're aware of? Gary does the quarterly testing. Yeah, and he'll provide the chart. He he'll probably come to uh, another meeting, but I don't think he has any results. These were the homes that the DP had selected that were not allowing Gary, and they felt that Gary didn't test them and he missed them. He didn't miss them, they just... They didn't respond. Didn't respond. Okay. And I sent a letter out and they finally responded and Gary got the test and uh, this is what happened. So, yeah. so we're trying yeah. to comply with DEP and DEP said, either you do it or we'll do it. So, we... At least that's resolved. But that's resolved, and um, certainly um, DEP is getting quite uh, aggressive on making sure uh, that we act right away. Yeah. And no. if we miss a house that's within that, they said that you know you need to do more to try and contact them. So this house that, that's getting the um, uh, poet system, if you will, right? Uh, did that warrant having an additional 500 foot testing of any other residents that? residences that weren't already under that mandate? Not on one road, the other road, and we're not sure at this time, we're identifying, but remember these people were plunk in the middle yeah, right. of no, already right. testing, right. and so I think everyone around them is already tested. Okay. They just were not answering the door or complying with allowing mm -hmm. CMG to test. So okay. they already let them in once, um, but then they were not responding. So I think some of this was as a result of someone moving or selling or doing whatever so but we've taken care of that issue and now we'll we'll do the proper thing and get the filtration system installed okay. mm -hmm. and then it comes with testing and you still have to provide the bottle of water because it has to make sure that the system installed is functioning properly so we can't stop even though the other systems because it has to go through three tests quarterly tests before we can stop the water delivery even with the filtration system mm -hmm. Who's the laboratory doing the testing, you know? I don't know the lab. I believe it's in Connecticut. Because not everyone in Massachusetts, I don't believe that they're up to date on the PFAS testing because parts per trillion. So, but Gary, um, we spoke on the phone and- Do you have any of the results here to get the name off of? I'm just curious who the, who, what the, who I, the lab is. The lab, I don't know who the lab is. I'm sure if I look it up under the, um, I'll, get, I, I'll send it to you all the, the latest results. Yep. Good. 
All right. Um, if you're done with PFAS, and I'm done, and unless any other board member has something on PFAS, I did want to touch um, base on the landfill, the mowing of the landfill. Mm -hmm. That's going as planned. Yes. Correct. DEP was also out for inspection of yeah. the landfill recently. Yeah, DEP called me and um, Greg Root said, I'm, I'm doing a surprise inspection. Call Gary, I'm doing it today. Didn't and, ask. And Gary was available. And he, thank God Gary was available, Gary. or I just would have went with him. Yeah. Um, but Gary was right down the street, mm -hmm. and Gary met them, and there were a couple issues that um, need to be addressed. It said scraping of, uh, right. and some of that. But um, he's. Um, it's being mowed. It looks pretty good. I was good. in there, and uh, he uh, had his whole crew working in there. He's very, very. He's used to doing it, so he knows all the trouble there oh, yeah. is. But sure. it's not easy. Those slopes are quite steep. Yeah. So, um, but so the, the we had some exposed areas where yeah. the, uh, the what do you call it? The, I call it the rubber, whatever. He's taking care of that. Yeah, and so there, it hasn't been monsoon rain this year yet. <laughs> No, we had some heavy rain. Yeah, I know. Day, so, but but so he's been able to get some grass growing on some of those exposed. He started that process, yeah. Okay. And I did speak to Bruce because I saw the gate open and I drove in there like, who's there? And I saw a gas, you know, a grill and someone was cooking with chairs and his crew had to eat lunch. So yeah, his hey, wife what the heck? Made him burgers and hot dogs <laughs> and get a permit. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it to him right away. I but he was there working. Um, and uh, doing a good job. It yeah. looks the landfill looks good. They uh, DP likes. So they were they were. Happy there were a couple very things. minor. Yes. Yeah. But things we already knew about. That right? we already yeah. The things so no that we surprises. Knew about. Right. But uh, that's about it. Nothing new on fifty four right now. Just because we've already right um, did the boundaries and we know um, where they're at and we're going to do with the we talked about the fencing and rocks that would be put there and mm -hmm. stuff. So. I, Gary will have once he gets more information to move forward, and we'll, okay. the board will have the authority to, you know, speak to Gary about that. Okay. But right Good. now it's just PFAS testing, and and he has been at the landfill testing. So, but like you said, Greg Root did show up, and and he called me and said, "Hey, guess what? Surprise! Surprise! That's a surprise, all right." And he was impressed. It, it looks good. Good. So. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we can move on to department head reports. How's that, Jim? I'd like to thank you for the board for supporting Jamie Rice, who uh, was going to work for uh, the coalition. Uh, it's very important that you know we have proper inspections here in Charlton, but some of the other towns are lacking in some areas, and that's what Jamie's for to assist um, towns. A lot of people on vacation, gone for a few weeks, don't have backup, and that's what she'll do. And she's determined to what she's going to do according to what each town would want her to do. When she reports disturbance, it's Ken Lacey and, and, and uh, the, their board, and she'll go before their board. And, and Wales doesn't have an inspector, so probably something she has to do. But they don't really have any stores, but they have a campground there that has a store. So, um, And they have one restaurant, I believe, there, but it's part of like a lodge. Um, and she'll do the schools. It's very important the schools get inspected, too, but it's summer now, but they still need to be inspected. So she'll do that for Wales and stuff. Um, our trailer started, our trailer for um, FEP, which is our EES, emergency dispensing site. All our product that was in there, I went through it with our CERT team a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was leaking the mm -hmm. roof, right. and it was full of mold, and I threw all that stuff out, emptied it. It's been picked up and being repaired and should be brought back in a couple weeks. I've ordered new materials to put back in to replace the stuff that was expired, and this, our trailer will be restocked. At no cost to the municipality, it'll all be um, through FEP and two grants. So. Good. When was the last time you had to go out with a trailer? Do you remember? We did um, uh, a mo we did a flu clinic in Dudley at Shepherd Hill. It was a combination of Dudley Charlton. This past winter, fall. Winter. No, no, it was, um, a, couple years ago. It was a couple years, years ago, okay. and we did it outside because of COVID, and people mm -hmm. drove up in their cars, and we had nurses gowned up and stuff. But we used a trailer then, and we set it up. Our, we have all the tents and everything. And that's what we did outside. We did um, a vaccination clinic. Okay. So okay. I was curious. I I couldn't recall last time. So yeah, it was uh, it was um, at Shepherd Hill because okay. it's a regional school, and um, we did it with Dudley and COVID. But Dudley doesn't 
their stuff is not in a trailer. Ours is available to pull and up to date and stocked and, and ready to go. And so, and we have the nursing Good. capability, so we do that. So people drive up and you just yep. like through the window, like roll up your sign the paperwork, roll up the sleeves, yep. and on your way. On your it's way. It's like getting a burger at the drive-through. And it was very well coordinated. We did a great job, and it was a long day, but uh, we did a good job. They vaccinated a few hundred people. I forget. Was it four hundred? But we like to work close with Dudley. It's a regional school, and uh, we use that parking lot, and, and uh, we work together. And uh, it was, you know, fire department, the fire chief actually towed the stuff out there for us, so it's good. Excellent. So, um, so that trail is there. Um, we have Jamie now um, that, that's on board. That'll be coming. We've been doing our camp inspections, and uh, I just did Camp Foskett. Matt, um, did you realize at Camp Foskett that that building for sheltering in case of a storm is, uh, um, they're not letting them use that building. They need a, um, an engineer, a uh, structural engineer to look at it. Yeah, I heard that. That's the, uh, the pavilion. Yeah, the pavilion. So uh, I'm going to send them a letter that I, I request that um, until the, no use of the pavilion, until they can get a structural engineer to um, say that it's okay um, to house uh, the 220 children that they have there because um, it looks like it's tipping over. Oh, jeez. So on the pile. Yeah, they, yeah. they use that um, for shelter, but especially on, like, heavy rain days, they'll they'll have the kids go in there and gather for the day in the rain. So I don't know what they're going to do if they're not allowed to use that, um, but the Y will have to figure something out for that. They did. Um, they, approved, they applied through Kurt's office and through the fire department for two tents, two very large tents, which Kurt approved. Uh, for use in case to get our rain in and sheltering. Okay, good. And they still have the the, main, the still building that's there next to it that can mm -hmm. house about, I think Kurt said a, a limit on that or 75 or, or 100 in there. So I think they'll be all set, but um, they're certainly the building, uh, the pavilion is starting to get old, but the tents have been approved and uh, they're in use now, Matt. Yeah, that's good. I I remember a day last year there was a storm warning with high winds and there was a lot of kids at the, at that camp during that time and it was kind of scary because a lot of big pine trees all around there and there's not really a great spot for everybody to go except out in the field where there's no trees there so it's but yeah um, that's good they have a roof over their head for the rain. Yeah I agree um, it's probably not this um, they do have a problem with uh, geese there so they're trying to mitigate that because the beach will probably end up um, sampling uh, and showing uh, E. coli coliform. But um, this, we haven't got the first test. The first test results came in okay, but I, there was a lot that they had to pick up. So um, they're going to have to be on geese patrol. Otherwise, those 200 kids are going to be uh, pretty hot um, and not be able to swim. It takes 40 hour, 48 hours to retest, resample. So, as, as you know, Matt. But uh, we we're trying to work with them. Uh, we didn't want to close the camp because of the pavilion, but the tents were allowed. Um, and I spoke to Kurt about it. They applied through the building department, and he approved the use of the two tents. So I don't have an issue with it. That's great. So, and we've done uh, inspections of uh, Nature's Classroom and uh, Camp Joslin, and we have a couple more to go. Um, but all in all, uh, it was very hot during the inspections, uh, but they're, they're they're looking good. We. Uh, um, going to um, the LARP camp, which is on uh, Eel Commons. Commons on uh, Northside Road, is reopening this year. Um, so we're going to go there, and we still have uh, um, the, um, each, not each classroom, but uh, Cape and Hill, and we have Challenger uh, Soccer, which is just a day thing. So, But that's about all I have, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Thank you. Jim, uh, any other business unknown at the time of posting? Matt, Steve? Yeah, I just want to ask, Jim, did, uh, we had a, a resident come in complaining about uh, a dirty yard. It was Saunders, the, I want to say 46, not for sure on that. But anyways, it looks like that yard, we were having a hard time. It was under um, new ownership or whatnot. That yard has been cleaned up as far as I've seen. Have, yeah. have you talked to the person that was complaining? Complaining yes. about it, and they all said, or what, any updates with that one? Um, Kevin Morin called me, who's the neighbor, and um, he's very happy. Uh, they cleaned up the property, 
and uh, he uh, is satisfied and thinks they're doing a good job. So um, that, that situation, like I said, Matt, uh, the new owner has taken care of that, and then that building should be looking uh, good soon. They've had dumpsters, lots of workers there. Um, he wants to bring it up to uh, habitability and uh, use it and fix the garage also. Good. So, okay, great. Thank you. So Kevin is, uh, I spoke to him on the phone. Uh, he's, he's very happy now. So good. it was a good conversation with him. Excellent. And I don't blame him for being upset. Yeah. Um, but uh, now uh, it's been resolved, thank God. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Did we lose Matt? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. oh, you're getting it. No, okay. Uh, Matt, um, it's time to uh, determine our next Board of Health meeting. Four weeks from now would be, do you know, from Jim? That's June. 23rd. 23rd, thank you, Kim. July 23rd? I should be here. Steve, do you know if you're going to be in town, available? I'm always in town. Okay, always in town. We like that. <laughs> How about you, Matt? Until September. Until <laughs> September. Uh, July 23rd, Matt, four weeks from now? Yep, excellent. All right, next meeting. 7-23. Okay. Matt, you're pretty dedicated in Florida and Universal, and you're on the phone and attending the meeting. Yeah, so you thank get you. a gold star for today. <laughs> all right, with that, I think we're all set. I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I'll I second, second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Meeting is over at 626.